this is the Brutal Planet uh, magazine interview with Norma Jean. I know you probably got a lot on your plate, so I'll try not to keep you too long, man. Um, the first new album uh, sounds really great. It's really heavy and brutal. Uh, what was the recording process like for you guys? Um, it was it was definitely different. I think when, when we went into it, uh, we we had like a an expectation of what it might be, which is never a good thing to do because yeah. you're, it's always going to be different, you know, than you think. You know, and, and we never worked with Will Putney before, um, and we just kind of hear from everyone like, you know, what they what he did for them, and it's usually just like. It was awesome. We had a great time, and, and you, you really did such a great job with, with our record. So, you know, we just trusted that and, and you know that for, for what we do, it, it's kind of, we like a looser feel. And, you know, when we got in there, we just realized what, what he did was he just made us play the song a ton. And, and, and then he would have ideas and, you know, Pretty much, he, like we got to a section of the song that, you know, just didn't feel right. Is what he would say. Just doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. He would he would say mess around with that a little bit more. You know, try try something else, and we would just sit there and play it over and over and over. And so that's kind of how he gets that that out of the band. He's it's like, you know, he puts the record through boot camp. So it, it was an interesting experience. We had a lot of fun. That's a good producer. Yeah. I mean, he just, it was funny too. He would just like sit there and look at his phone. Like, we were like, what's this guy doing? He's like looking at his phone. He, <laughs> later on, we realized <laughs> he's just making us play this song. Like, he would just like play it again. <laughs> and he was just like still, and then he would have an idea, and then he'd just like play it again. You know, like slouching in his chair. I was like, is this going to be cool? And it just was. He like, if there's a, there's a method to the madness, I, I, I would say. He, but he's just a lot of fun. He, he's, he has a good sense of humor. Um, he's he's really serious, but if if you have any concerns, he listens to you. You know, it's um, yeah, he's just a good producer. He gets it. And I really think that that we were lucky to get to get in with him because I think that dude's going to end up doing some. I mean, he's already done some huge, huge stuff, but he, I think he's going to be in a, ending up doing some even bigger stuff and. I mean, his prices are probably going to go through the roof. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's, he's just a badass, man. He just rules. Awesome. Well, the album sounds great, and you can definitely... I mean, it's, it has the it has the signature sound that you guys have kind of had for the last several years, but it's still... It's also got some new elements, which I think is always cool, you know? Absolutely. I think that was... Uh, we always try to pick... Because, you know, you write a record, and then you're done with it, and you go, what the heck are we going to do next? You know, like, how are we going to beat that? Yeah. So with this record, we thought, you know, beating what we've done on a sonic level is how we're going to do it. And and Will was was the guy for that. And yeah, he didn't, you know, he catered to what we do. You know, he didn't just like um, copy paste us into a process. He, he and, and honestly, you know, working with Josh on the last couple albums, he does the, a similar thing, but. It's kind of good to like break away and, and try something different. And I'm yeah. sure we could we could end up working with Josh again, and who knows? But it was just cool to like break away from that and try something new and keep it keeps us on our toes, you know? Sure. All right. Next question. Um, to me, you guys have kind of been one of the more consistent heavy bands of the like 2000s era, right? Like you guys are pretty regularly putting stuff out and touring and stuff. Um, are there specific bands that you you would name drop or, or like sp- specific people that you guys like to tour with or work with, um, you know, that you've kind of worked with a lot over the years? Yeah. Um, it changed a lot because, um, as long as we've been around, I, I mean, it, it's, there's like a, there's a sad aspect to it because I've seen them come and I've watched them go. Yeah. And, yeah. And, I've seen some bands that, you know, we took them on, on their first tour and then, you know, they keep going. They, that band ends up blowing up. So that, that's happened too. So 
I, I kind of see it, see both sides of it where, um, you know, fewer fans that explode in something much bigger than us. And then, you know, some bands kind of like just end up do, even doing that and then just going away. So, yeah, there's a lot of that. It's, it's, you know, when you've been, been around as long as we have. Sure. But, um, I think the thing that we, we try to do is not put ourselves in a box where it's like, we're an regime and we've been around since the late nineties. So, you know, there's, yeah. this band's too young. We can't tour with them. Cause I think we got a lot of that when we were coming up, you know, like we, we blew up bigger than some of our, uh, you know, things that we looked up to and they became our peers. And we got a lot of no's. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, we're not going to not gonna play under your band. So we don't do that. I think that's kind of one of the things that kind of keeps us going is that we'll, we'll do those tours. We say yes to them because our whole thing is, you know, are there going to be people there? Yeah. <laughs> exposure like, is exposure. I'll, yeah, I'll play in front of them. I hope they like us too. Sure. So, Touring really is just like a road trip with your friends and we get to play music and, and we embrace entertainment too. We like to put on a show and the people pay hard money to their hard earned money to come see us play. So we want to make sure that they get that they're interested. But I don't know. I know that's like not really answering your question, but I know it's all right. It's all right. It's hard to pick like, you know, specific bands because there's sure. it changes a lot and there's, there's just so I many of them. Um, what are your touring plans for, what are you guys touring plans for this album? Are, are you doing like Europe, the States? What, what, what kind of tour stuff do you have to have in store? Yeah. Oh man, it's been awesome. We, we've, um, that, that has been kind of thing with us. I think, uh, you know, just that answer that I gave, like, that, you know, we'll do a lot of work that people don't think we'll do. Mm-hmm. Um, we, this year, we did In Flames in Europe, which was, Ridiculous! That band is they're Metallica in Europe. So yeah, so we were playing these huge rooms. It was great. Um, we just did Fit for a King, which was really awesome. Um, we're 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 out with uh, Devil Wears Prada and Gideon coming up in a couple of months, and that's like a market, you know, places like L.A., New York, and stuff. And um, we're I think we're trying to go back to Europe in February headliner and then we're doing a headliner um next spring so awesome. yeah lots of stuff coming up and we'll, we'll do some summer fest and stuff too all right cool looking forward to hopefully seeing you guys out here in uh, the la area yeah man come see us for sure come hang out um so so basically the, the next question was going to be so what inspires you or what are you what are you listening to right now um you know, it was kind of a, the original question, what inspires you was kind of more in regards to like to create music, you know, like what, do you, what inspires you guys when you write basically. Um, so it's kind of a two part question. And then I guess, what are you listening to? Maybe the second part, what do you, if you want to name drop anything or, or any bands, yeah. or any kind of stuff that you're, you know, weird, uh, you know, avant-garde stuff you listen to right now. Yeah. So, um, uh, our musical range, there, there's a lot of them, but my, my inspirations are still pretty much the same things um, that I've always listened to. I, I, I'm a huge like fan of like I grew up in the in the '90s as a teenager, so like I like you know like '90s alternative and stuff. Those, those bands are yeah. still super relevant to me. Like um, the new Tool album is probably something that like you probably have the same interest in me. I grew up in the '90s too, so. Oh yeah, dude. I mean. I um I kind of make fun of Tool sometimes just to like joke around. But <laughs> yeah, I love that band, and and yeah. Maynard is is one of my biggest influences for sure. Uh, I think we kind of have a similar like uh, range in the sense of like I like the same kind of melodic tone that he picks. Yeah, and I I I've you know he was one of the reasons that I, I do some of the things I do on recording while I'll, I'll layer some parts, you know, I'll put an octave under what, I, what I'm saying or, and an octave higher and you just turn that down really low. You can barely hear it, but it just makes this kind of like background kind of like big sound behind what I'm doing. Yeah. And if, you know, if you don't know it's there, you won't hear it, but um, there's, there's lots of that kind of stuff. That's a, that's a Maynard 
uh, uh, studio trick. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's a big influence for me. Uh, Stashing Pumpkins. Um, there's this band called 238 that that was around in the 90s and early 2000s. That they aren't a band anymore, but um, that they have my desert island record called uh, You Should Be Living. It's really, really good. Well, I've never heard of that um, band, so I'll have to check that out for sure. Yeah, I think I think the probably the biggest inspiration for this album isn't really musically based. It's more the, the album is really based around the fans. Um, even even to the title, you know, mm-hmm. the, all hail. Um, yeah, all hail. That's a, that's the a fan. The fans made that up. They they started doing the all hail, the Almighty Norma Jean thing. And, you know, it's just kind of a fun, like, nickname type thing that, yeah. that they created. And it got, you know, got thrown around a little bit. So we adopted the Almighty part years ago. But um, now we just kind of added the All Hail thing as the title. And so there, there's some there's some songs on there that are inspired by some stories that we've heard, too, over the years. And I think it's the thing that it made us kind of think, that what we're doing is a little more than just like writing some riffs in a garage and making music. Mm-hmm. And it, it kind of seemed to, you know, to be really, really important to some people. And it, make, it made us think that what we do is important. And, and, and that kind of drove us to, you know, to keep doing it, make sure that we're not, we're not cutting corners and we're not, you know, just thinking of it as, you know, just right, cool, heavy risk. Cause that's still important. But yeah, like, so the, the, the fans and like, you know, really diving into those, those types of stories and writing an album with, with a theme and, and a, and a story in mind. So the album really tells a story from beginning, beginning to end and starts out with this kind of, um, almost fictional reality type. Vibe. I love the first track, man. Oh, thanks. It comes in uh, so thanks. hard. Yeah, and we wrote that with the intention of this is going to be track one, so it needs to be a track one. Yeah, and, and when you write with that, in, yeah, I like, guess like it has a and it's and it's kind of short too. It's not like mm-hmm. you know it's full on like first course, first course thing. And then you got a whole fictional reality thing and then it ends with something really very real with the song Anna. Um, and Anna is a fan who became a friend when we get, became really close to her. She passed away last, last September on the day that we started writing the album. Oh. So that really kind of hit home for us and she, you know, she was really close. So, we that was the first song we wrote, and we named it after her. So, it's, you know, as it's kind of like almost a fictional intro and, and very real personal outro. It kind of gets there through a series of other stories. That's great, man. That's that's exactly kind of I, I couldn't have asked for a better answer. Like, I'm always curious, you know, uh, just what people's kind of uh, inspiration behind the, the art that they're making and stuff is. And you don't want to give too much away because, you know, I'm sure you know as, as a musician, people attach their own meaning to your stuff too. But but yeah, that's really cool to hear that. Yeah, it's it's um, I, I, for years I don't think I knew how to answer questions like that. You know, <laughs> I kind of you kind of get really awkward. And then uh, my wife tell me like, Hey, some of your answers, you're like not being serious. Like when you, <laughs> when you tell us, yeah, I'm like, okay, thanks babe. <laughs> and, uh, but she knows like when you, when you give a serious answer, it's, it's that has more impact. So like, I try to like, just tell the truth as much as I can with the things. And, and I still don't want to explain it all, but yeah, it's well, in there somewhere, you know? Yeah, that's good advice because that was, that was that's a great answer. That's the kind of stuff that um, that fans want to hear too, too. You know, like I'm a fan of the band myself. I've, I've listened to you guys for a long time. So awesome, thanks, man. I rule. Um, so next question, and we'll we'll try to wrap this up because I want to keep you too long, man. Um, how do you feel well, about the current state of music with streaming and, and everything? Um, just as a, as an industry. 
I think there's still a little bit to go with with everything. Um, and yeah, current state is the best way because I, I don't think it stays here. And uh, we've already seen it kind of morph a little bit. Streaming, yeah. I, I think definitely has got to change because, you know, it's, it, there is a, it, music is worth something, you know, like, yeah. If anybody's ever been in like a doctor's office or a grocery store or somewhere that just wasn't playing music, it's awkward in there. We're so used to it and, you know, or it, watch a movie with no music. Good luck. Oh, yeah. You're going to, you're going to think it's weird. So it, it, that's what conjures emotions and it's so important to our daily lives. And then it's just to kind of, you know, it's kind of become this love. You got that app. It's kind of cool to, you know, yeah. uh, navigate around. It's not, it's not, um, you know, we don't have any control over what our, our profile looks like on, yeah. on those apps as much, but that's our music. So I think, I think it's got a way to go. Um, I'm not totally happy with it, but it's better than torrents. And, yeah, you know, just taking music and, and, who, and a lot of the frustration with that too is just getting terrible sounding versions mm-hmm. of oh, albums. Yeah. Like, I'll, no, like you're, you're just listening to the worst possible version of, of this song that has thousands yeah. of dollars behind it. So I have a friend who watches bootleg movies, and it, it drives me insane. I'm like, how can you? This is terrible. The picture's terrible. It's like in Chinese overdubs. And, yeah, no. God, like, the whole thing is a visual art. Like, don't, don't ruin it for yourself just because you need to, you know, watch the new, I don't know, Marvel movie or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the new Marvel movie. <laughs> yeah, and, and that, I mean, theaters are taking a hit from that stuff, too. Um, like, man, that's the best place to see a movie, really. And it's just, and there's some frustrating stuff about it, but there's no going back. So Yeah, yeah, the genie's out of the bottle. So Yeah, I think the thing that we, you know, all, all, the, all the musicians heard in the beginning was, oh, well, you have to adapt. It's like, yeah. well... We are being forced to, so yeah, we're going to, but I think, you know, the streaming platforms, they, they need to adapt a little bit too and, and compromise sure. because it, you know, there, there is a, it has kind of made it easier for any artist to get on those places. So it's like, yeah, there, there's, there's good to it. There's great stuff about it. You know, any band can, as long as you have the recording, it's just total, bullshit you can get on those, those streaming platforms for relatively cheap and it's, that's cool to be able to yeah. to that it gives it definitely gives a leg up for indie bands mm-hmm. yeah that, I mean we didn't have that you know when we no were up. so I, I'm glad for that so um, but to your point now, you lose I want that you lose the artistry too like the Tool album has the cool artwork that you're not going to get on yeah absolutely man and, I mean, we've really focused a, a lot on vinyl now. That's kind of an interesting too thing about it too. Vinyl made to come back. You see, yeah. are basically obsolete at this point. They're a bit close. Um, if not already here. I think last question: What do you guys do outside of music? Um, what are some of the band's interests outside of uh, just you know what you guys normally do: writing, and creating, and touring? Um. Well. Um, I think for me, um, having, having been working full time now for about 20 years, 16 to 20 years, my home life becomes pretty valuable. Um, okay. and it's not necessarily like a vacation just cause I'm not on tour and we're still working, but so yeah, it's like, for me, it's just like spending time with family and stuff, but, um, that's pretty Standard answer, but yeah, I yeah think that makes sense. Though. I like, um, I've gotten into managing a couple of artists. Just, oh, nice. You know, like, which I'm having a blast doing, and, and it really just started it as like, I like this band. I want to help them. And then, you know, I was doing all the manager stuff, and it's like, oh, well, maybe I should just do this. And so That's awesome. Kind of, 
yeah, I just kind of, kind of dived in that. So I have a couple of little artists that I picked up. I used to do graphic design a lot, but I don't, I don't really do that as much. Yeah. And uh, other than that, just we're still writing. We're still, you know, doing other musical-related things at home. And I'm, I'm, I want to do a solo project. There's all kinds of stuff that I'm doing musically. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty much home life. Yeah, do you guys do you guys still stay out in Georgia where you're from? No, um uh I've always lived in Arkansas. I Oh, okay. I commuted to Atlanta for about ten years to to do Norma Jean. In two thousand twelve I moved the band here. Um it just more centrally located. Um, sure. either way ever everyone's gonna have to travel, you know, and for practice, writing, whatever, so we save a lot of money here, and um, uh, most of us ended up here anyway. So, it, it, it's, yeah, Arkansas. That's cool, man. Well, I mean, congratulations, because like I said, you guys, I, I've been into metal since I was a kid, I'm, um, and cool. you guys have been, you're one of those bands that has, has been around for, you know, like a lot of bands have come and gone since 2000, and you guys are still cranking, putting out great music, so... Thank you so much, man. Awesome. Well, it was great talking to you. I appreciate your time, man. Looking forward to seeing you guys out on the road. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it, and talk to you later. All right, take care, brother. All right. Yeah.